Hello, everyone. Welcome Hello, to everyone. the next 10 to 13 activity here with my yes on YouTube. Let's see. Um, my name is Claire and I'm from my yes Torino and this is Dale. Hello. Hi, also Dale. Mean, I'm from my yes Torino. <laughs> Hello, Claire. Hello. Nice to see you today. Yes, so, nice to today we are talking about healthcare. Dale, can you tell our viewers a little bit about uh, what healthcare is available in the UK, where you and I are from? Yes, so yeah, I'm from the UK, but in the north of England, but the healthcare is the same all over the UK. Um, we have a free healthcare, that's HS, which stands for National Health Service. So, like in Italy, it's a free healthcare. Yeah, so it works very much similar to here in Italy. Um, with our own family general practitioner, um, yeah. here in Italy in many ways. But different comparisons. Right. Great. Thanks, Dale. So, our activity today. We're going to look at some vocabulary uh, related to illnesses and phrases to do with healthcare. We've got a couple of viewers joining us. Hello, viewers. Welcome. Nice to see you. Introduce yourselves if you would like. OK, so let's begin with some questions, Dale. Would you like to read question one? Of course. So, what are some ways people in your country try to stay healthy? Okay. So, um, in the UK, I'd say that going to the gym is a popular activity. Would you agree? Yes, I would agree. I would agree. Did you go to the gym in the UK? I used to go to the gym. Uh, when I lived in London, and I had a very different lifestyle. I worked in an office all day. Um, I needed to do something. Um, I tried mm. to go twice a week uh, to go to the gym yes. um, <laughs> to oh, stretch lucky. from uh, different to sitting at the computer. Um, yes. <clears throat> I think in the UK, the weather is uh, quite poor. So going to the gym is such a popular mm. activity. Um, not like in, in Italy. <laughs> um, so I think we're lucky in Italy we can be outside a lot more um, yes but well, we used to be able to go outside <laughs> <laughs> yes until now yeah <laughs> the moment. Um, no so what other activities uh Dale do you think are popular in uh the UK um activities are popular in the UK we like to, obviously, like here, many people like to play football. So I used uh, to play football two, three times a week with my friends. Um, yeah. Um, but like you said before, because of the weather, uh, we normally used to play indoors. Also yeah. squash and badminton we used to play uh, yeah. indoors. Yeah. yeah. So, Great. Yeah. Oh. We've got some new Just viewers. Like Hello. Right. Welcome to our new viewers. Deborah, you're telling us about uh what you usually do um so usually mm -hmm. walk um which is great to do in italy we have good weather and walking outside is is really nice thing to do here <clears throat> yeah. also eat healthy that's a good one yeah eating healthily uh, is important to to maintain a, a healthy lifestyle okay let's Let's look at question two. Dale, would you read question two? Of course. So which do you think has a greater influence on someone's health, their lifestyle or their genes? An interesting question. Yeah, yeah, Dale, what do you think? Um, well, both have, a, I would say, an, a big influence. Um, your genes, obviously, they define the type of body you have, uh, whether you're more prone to different certain types of, uh, I don't know, diseases, etc., or forms in your body. But I think lifestyle also 
probably has a bigger effect because if you have a certain type of body, you can also work to change that. It may be a bit harder than other people. But mm. yeah, I would say your lifestyle has the greatest influence. And you, what do you think? I agree. Yeah, I agree. I think different people have different body types and you have to manage your body type in, in different ways. Not everyone yes. is the same. Uh, it's about balance. No. Uh, we've got yes. a viewer here, Olga, saying hi to us. Hi, Olga. Welcome. Hi, welcome. Olga. Hi. Okay. Um, so, viewers, tell us what do you think? Tell us your opinions. Do you think someone's health um, is influenced by their lifestyle or by their genes? You tell us what you think. Okay, meanwhile, let's go to question three, Dale, please. Uh, okay, are you healthy? What do you do to make sure you stay healthy and fit? Okay, sorry, Dale, one moment. We've got some feedback from yes. some of our viewers on the previous question. So yeah. we've got Julia. Hi, Julia. So she talks about um, lifestyle and willpower. Oh, willpower is... Mm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't have very much willpower. <laughs> no, really? <laughs> <laughs> no, not so much. No, is that uh, willpower for exercise or willpower for diet? Uh, a bit of both. I'm, I'm quite lucky in some ways just because, well, lucky on, on one hand because I'm slim, so I don't put on weight very easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I can get away with eating a lot of junk food. <laughs> I don't wow. eat a lot of junk food, but I can get away with it. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, willpower for exercise. I start a lot of exercises, but then I don't really continue them yeah okay thanks for that julia we've got deborah as well she's telling us mm -hmm. that both are important um but where there's a lack of good genes the best solution is to improve your lifestyle a little bit like like what you were saying dale i think yeah uh, roberta yes, has sure, just sure. joined us hello roberta i'm sunny Salano. Yes, I think it's sunny. Yes, down there. <laughs> Welcome. Okay, so looking at that third question, Dale, tell us what do you do to what stay do I do? Good and question. Fit? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, my wife is uh, a vegetarian, so I do eat a lot of healthy food because of mm -hmm. that. Um, <laughs> and I play football when I can. When okay. like work allows it. <laughs> and you, Claire? Um, dance is my favourite form of uh, exercise. I find it hard to motivate myself to do running or um, mm. exercise yeah. that you would do in the gym. So I prefer dancing, something with music, uh, lots of energy. I try to do mm -hmm. that. Um, and I'm very conscious of, of my diet as well. I try to eat healthily. Okay, Roberta is here telling us about what she does. Um, so she stays fit and follows a balanced diet. Yeah. I think we all agree balance is the key yes. here. Yeah, absolutely. Does anybody have any different, any ideas on how best to stay fit? Any ideas for us? Because mm. I'm always interested. Tips and advice would be fantastic. Yeah, yeah. What do you value? I do. I do like walking. Actually, someone mentioned walking earlier, and um, mm. I do love walking into the city centre. We're very lucky here in Turin that it's a mm. flat city, so um, yes. I do enjoy walking to the city centre, to the park, getting lots mm. of fresh air. Ah, oh, yes. we can dream. Awesome. Pre quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty one. Yeah, at the moment, we can walk around our house. That's all my yeah, to say. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you oh, have a we're balcony, quite lucky Dale? Here because, uh, uh, yes, we have two balconies, one back and one front. So, okay. two different views. <laughs> okay. How is that? Is there? <laughs> Roberta is Roberta back is here. Going. Yeah. So, Roberta, you're telling us you love cooking. Yes, it is a difficult time to avoid uh, <laughs> yeah. all that food right now. We're staying indoors, we're eating a lot, not much exercise. Um, so, yeah. 
as Dale said, if you've got any tips, if people have got tips and advice for staying healthy during this period, uh, we'd love to love to hear those ideas. Mm. So I'm quite lucky where I live as well, because I live outside Torino. I live in Kivasso and we have uh, many hills in front of Kivasso. So mm -hmm. five minutes by car and we're in the, in the hills, which is nice. And then you can get a beautiful view of uh, Turin, which is very nice. Yeah. Do you run, Dale? Run? No, I used to run, but um, mm. now I, I don't enjoy it so much. And also for my knees, it's not so good. Uh, I get uh, yeah. a lot of pain in my knees. So okay. Best to okay. avoid. That. Best to avoid, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's move on um, to talk about some other questions. So, Dale, do you remember the last time you felt ill or you were injured? Uh, the last, okay, the last time I felt ill was over the winter. I had, uh, you, you probably can remember. I'm glad I had uh, quite a I do, time. I do. You were really, really ill. So, yes. yeah. I don't think it was coronavirus, but I felt no. quite bad. <laughs> I, quite, mm. I felt quite well. Uh, yeah. for a few weeks uh, and injured. Uh, the only big injury I remember was when I was little and I broke my arm. Uh, um, biggest injury I've had. But it's a good thing. Oh, what, what happened? How did you, how did you do that? Um, I, <laughs> it's a funny story. I was, I don't know what okay. they have in Italy. I assume they did. There's more like child gates that uh, parents can put in their house to stop children entering yeah. certain rooms or going down the stairs. I was climbing over one of them uh -huh. to play with my brother and I fell off it and broke my own. It's an embarrassing story to put uh. on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were a child. You were a child. It's a okay. Child, yeah. It's okay. Yeah. So viewers, yeah, tell us, own. tell us, when, when were you last ill? When did you last have an injury? I'm similar to Dale. I was very, very sick in, in December. I had a terrible flu, um, yeah. blocked blocked ears. Um, I couldn't You're hear for a very now, long time. Uh, just oh, it's a little cold, I think, at the moment. It's the winter. Yeah. <laughs> the change in the weather um, yeah. doesn't help things. Doesn't help things. Yeah. Nope. Okay. Anybody else? Has everyone been healthy from all of this, these healthy lives? Ah. Here's Deborah again. Hi, Deborah. Okay. Wow. <laughs> wow. Deborah, it was 10 Strong years ago. System. Wow, that's very lucky indeed. Tell us, what are your tips? What's your advice to stay healthy? <laughs> we need to know your, your real, really good advice. Me, there. Always. <laughs> <laughs> quite often, quite often, yes. I am susceptible to those kind of things yeah so um the second question dale it says what did you do can you describe um after you broke your arm um mm -hmm. how how did you solve it what happened um so what happened <laughs> is a lot of crying and then my dad uh brought to the hospital mm -hmm. and um what happened after that is my arm was in, uh, was put in a plaster cast. Okay. So to keep my arm in one place and in a sling. Mm -hmm. And I was like that for a good two months, three months. Oh, wow. And then afterwards I did some like, uh, physiotherapy to begin using my arm again. It was very painful. Okay. Not a pleasant experience. Yeah. So I'm just going to put up the vocabulary for everybody here. Um, that okay. was. A plaster cast and sling. What's a sling, Dale? It basically holds your arm in place. You put it around your neck to stop it, uh, so, so you can keep your weight off it. Basically, mm -hmm. it can be heavy with a plaster cast. Yeah. yeah. And did you take anything for the pain at all? Um, yes, I took some paracetamol. Um, a lot of paracetamol <laughs> to help with the pain. <laughs> okay, so that pronunciation is different to the Italian pronunciation. Could you repeat that for us? Yes, paracetamol. Okay, great, great. 
Um, so we've got Deborah telling us about the last injury she had. Ah, so although she was oh. sick more than 10 years ago, she fell down the stairs. But not so lucky. No. <laughs> not oh. so lucky with that then. Yeah. Deborah, you said injured your ankle. I hope it wasn't broken. Maybe it was mm. twisted or um, maybe sprained. sprained. Yeah. Deborah, tell us, how did, how did you solve it? What did you do to make your, your ankle better? Tell us. Okay. Julia. Ah. Mm -hmm. So, Julia injured her knee. When she was skiing, ah, oh, that sounds Ouch. painful. Dale, do you ski? I've never been skiing for this oh. very reason. <laughs> I, I don't, too. I just can imagine too many injuries. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm afraid of it. Julia, tell us, was it very bad? Did you have to go to hospital for that one? Um, Deborah's saying um, she just twisted the ankle, it wasn't broken. Um, and she I'm said good. she made a bandage. So, Deborah, mm -hmm. I'll just uh, correct the spelling of bandage for you. Here we go. Bandage is with, a, is with an A, that one, bandage. Okay. So you made that yourself, Deborah. You didn't go to hospital. Tell us, did you have to DIY. see a doctor or yeah, DIY, do it yourself, maybe. <laughs> Tell us what happened there. You, Glenn. Okay. You well, um, the last time I was injured <clears throat> was more than 16 years ago. I had a terrible mm. back injury. But it wasn't, it wasn't a sudden injury. It was a, an injury that happened over time. So the discs in my, my spine um, slowly compressed. Two of them compressed over time and became uh, prolapsed. And so I had very terrible sciatica in my right leg. Um, terrible, terrible backache. I was off work for a long time. And I was given two epidurals um, as, as a solution, yes. <laughs> Normally people are given epidurals um, when they have babies, they go into labor. But I had yes. to have two for my, my prolapsed discs. Yeah, so that was, that was a bad injury. And uh, I've had you recovered? Um, I, will never recover, I will never recover 100%. I had oh. years and years of physiotherapy and uh, still sitting down for me is, is not very easy on certain, no. certain muscles have suffered, yeah. but you know, so you learn, you learn to, happy. yeah, you learn to live with these injuries in the end. Yeah. Yeah. Of yeah. course, of course. Yeah. So. Okay. Let's talk about number three. What should people do when they feel ill? Let's go back to talking about when you and I had very terrible flu in December and January. Uh, what should people do when they have a, a normal cold or a normal flu? What do you think, Dale? Um, I would say uh, rest is an important thing. <clears throat> a lot of rest, um, just to rest your body. Uh, not to put it under too much strain. Because obviously when you're fighting uh, a flu or something, you will be a lot weaker. So I would say rest, mm -hmm. some paracetamol to help with the pain. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, a lot of tea. Yeah. Did you say tea? Yes, hot tea. <laughs> hot tea, yes. Very British. <laughs> Okay, Julia's <laughs> telling us. Julia's telling us about uh, her knee injury here. Okay, so three months of rehab and a knee brace and wow. crutches. Oh, that's great vocabulary there. Crutches. Yeah. What are crutches, Dale? For anyone who doesn't know, what are crutches? Uh, to help you walk. Yeah. So when you like Julia, when you have a bad injury on your knee or your leg, 
they're like the, the two supports that you use to walk like this <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> demonstrate on, the, on webcam but they help yeah. you to walk yeah extra legs <laughs> yes, wow extra legs <laughs> yeah julia can you ski now is it okay are you are you fully recovered tell us i hope so yeah yeah three months now yeah really help yeah quite a bad injury yeah okay yeah. Now, we're going to look at some vocabulary together. Dale, over to you for this yes. one. Okay. So, what does it mean? So, what do you think each of these words mean? Uh, Claire, do you want to read them? Mm -hmm. Treat, cure, and heal. With the, the H okay. on that one. Okay. Let's remember the H. Okay, and here we have some definitions. So, Claire, do you want to read? Sure. A, to regain health, B, to give medicine, and C, to restore to health. Okay. okay. So we'll give uh, you viewers a few, uh, few minutes, a few seconds to give us your answers. Yeah. And then we'll go ahead and see. Everyone tell us what you think. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that boy looks a bit like me <laughs> when I broke my arm. <laughs> yes, yeah. So there we have the plaster cast. <laughs> Wasn't and the... <laughs> and the sling. Yeah. What does she have around her neck? The What's object the um, that she has is called stethoscope. And I will write that for everybody as well. Stethoscope. Bear with me a moment. Yeah, that's a hard one. <laughs> okay, great. Anybody? Give you a few, few more seconds before we go ahead. Yeah, tell us what do you think? One, two, three, ABC. Have you, so have you been go. taking uh, anything, Claire, in these days? No, no cold. Yeah, so there's um, a famous British brand um, I have called Lemsip. Ah. Lemsip is my favourite. Um, this is a blackcurrant flavour. Traditionally, they produced a lemon flavour, and this is blackcurrant. Yes. It's a paracetamol powder, but you make a, mm -hmm. a lovely hot drink with it. Yeah, mm. so I take that. Yes. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Yes. Okay, we've got the one attempt in Deborah. Okay. Uh -huh. Treat to restore to health. Hmm. What do you okay. think, Claire? Maybe, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. We need to know. We've got three there. Deborah, can you have a go at all three? Okay, Julia. So. 1B, okay, 2A, and 3C, good me. <laughs> Should we put them out there, misery? <laughs> yeah, okay. So, treat is to give medicine, yes. Mm -hmm. So, could you give us an example, Claire, for how we could use treat in this way? Yes, for sure. Um, at this time, I'm treating my cold uh, with Lemsip. <laughs> yes. I'm taking Lemsip to treat my cold. Excellent, yeah. So we can use Lemsip, we can use medicine, paracetamol, to treat flu, cold, etc. Good. And as we can see, yeah, cure is to restore health. Mm -hmm. So cure to restore health. They were quite difficult, cure and heal. They're quite similar. But maybe, Claire, do you want to give us an example of when we can use cure? Sure. Um, for example, my uncle was uh, cured of pneumonia last year. So we tend to use mm -hmm. cure for a disease. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So for mm -hmm. diseases, for yeah, infections, like uh, yeah. you also say to a very, a very common expression, cure cancer. So yeah, mm -hmm. excellent. Um, and then finally, heal to regain health. Mm. Excellent. So, how could we use this in a sentence, Claire? 
Yeah, so Dale, if we think about your broken arm, your yes. arm healed, so it came together over time uh, after you had yeah. your plaster cast. Yeah, so we yes. tend to use heal for injuries. Yeah. Usually you can Injury see, wound. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Maybe you have exactly. a cut or something, and then over time it yeah. comes together, so it heals. Yes, exactly. If anyone wants to add some examples as well in the comments, we'll be happy to hear them. Also, Julia mentioned uh, before, she had a comment about her skiing. <coughs> so, I started skiing again in January 2020. I love skiing. I can't stay away from the snow too much. <laughs> it's uh, Many Italians, they love to ski, I've noticed. In England, it's not really a... It's not really in our culture to ski so much compared to here, mm. I would say. I think we're very close to a fantastic mountain range here. Mm. Um, yeah. It's definitely a mountain culture in the north here. Probably maybe in the south yeah. of Italy is maybe a different different climate, different uh, culture. Um, yes, true. Yeah. Okay, excellent. So I think we also have some questions here. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, don't you read them, Blair? Sure, the first one. How do you treat the flu? So, how do you treat the flu? Any comments? Oh, we've got a comment here from Julie. Could you repeat the example for cure? So, yes. Um, last year, my uncle was cured of pneumonia. So we use cure when we talk about diseases. We could say um, my uncle had an operation for heart disease and then he was cured of heart disease. Yes, yeah. Excellent, well done. Um, also, Roberta, could you explain to me the difference between disease and illness? That's a good mm -hmm. question. <laughs> hmm. So... I would say when we talk about illness, it's a bit more general. Yeah. Illness is really general. Yeah. And Could disease be. is something. Yeah. Sorry, Delka. <laughs> no, go ahead. No, go ahead. It's a slight um, delay, so. <laughs> yeah. Disease is something more specific, like cancer, um, heart disease, pneumonia. Yeah. Yeah. Probably been a bit more severe, something that is on a, also maybe on a, a wider scale as well. When we speak about. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, how do you treat the flu? Roberta gave an answer. You should stay at home, lie down, and rest. Good advice. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Do you have any ideas for how to cure, treat the flu? Obviously, it's uh, very newsworthy yes, at the moment. It is. And please remember, we're not doctors. Uh, we're English teachers. No. Um, but the advice yeah. in general is take paracetamol, um, guided by the instructions on the packaging. Um, so, for example, yeah. my LEMSIP says I must take one sachet every four to six hours. And I must not exceed four sachets in 24 hours. So um, mm. one sachet is just one of those. Um, and also, yeah, staying in bed is fantastic. Sleep is yes. very good for you. Mm. Um, yeah, your body needs a lot of sleep. Mm, yeah. yeah. And obviously call your doctor <laughs> for any <laughs> other advice. Yeah, absolutely. If it's serious, yes. Okay. Uh, do you want to read the next question, Claire? Yes. What diseases can we cure? Hmm. What diseases can we cure? Hmm. What do you think, Claire? Um, I think, again, I'm not a doctor. Um, I think there are some <laughs> forms, some forms of cancer we can cure. And that could be um, through surgery, an operation to remove that cancer from the body. 
Um, there are treatments such as radiotherapy, chemotherapy, which can be used to cure yeah. some forms of cancer. True. Um, yeah. Something like diabetes, for example, is not something that is mm -hmm. curable, but something we have to yes. manage. Yeah, unfortunately, some diseases are not curable at the moment. Also, you mentioned you you had a family member, a relative who had pneumonia. So mm -hmm. I, I assume that was cured as well. Yeah, yeah, that's something that can be cured in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And again, is anybody disease. watching? Sorry, Claire. <laughs> Does anybody else have any uh, any examples of diseases they have had, or somebody they've known that have, uh, has had a disease that has been cured or that is not curable? And we can we can talk about. Hmm. Sorry, Claire, what were you saying? Um, I think heart disease is something that can be cured as well. I'm not an expert, yes. but I think it is something that can be cured. Yeah, I think yeah, not. Not an expert, but yeah, I think, or well, at least it can be managed, but yeah, possibly it could be cured as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the last question. Mm -hmm. How now. how long does it usually take for an injury to heal? Mm -hmm. Well, I would say it depends. <laughs> depends <laughs> on the, you know, the type of injury. Like obviously for my arm it took a good three months to heal, four months. I would say like uh, breakages, <laughs> bone breakages uh, would, yeah, take a couple of months to heal, to get back to yeah. its original strength. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe any, like a, a twist or a sprain could take a, I don't know, maybe a bit less time. What do you think, Claire? Yeah, I agree. Depends on the severity of the injury, of course. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. You said you used to play football. Um, were you often yes. injured when you played football? Um, quite regularly, yes. Um, I have a, a, a weakness in my hamstring. Okay. Um, so quite often, if I would always have to stretch a lot, a lot more than my teammates. I would have to do specific stretches with my coach uh, to try and make sure that uh, my hamstring was ready for the, the game. But quite often, I would uh, I would pull it, pull my hamstring. And it's very painful because mm -hmm. you can barely walk afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's sports are particularly. Yeah, you can get injured quite a lot in sports. Yeah, yeah, especially with sports where there's a lot of sprinting, short sprinting, you can uh, for ligaments and things like that. If you don't stretch them or warm them up well enough, you, you put yourself at risk. Mm. Okay, uh, Julia has a has a comment. So I have a. Amblyphobia. Yeah, I hope I pronounce that correctly. Lazy eye on my left eye. It's not terrible perfectly, but I can manage it. Yeah. Also, my brother. Also, yeah. my brother has a, a similar thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lazy eye. Yeah. But do you take anything, uh, Julia, or do you have, uh, because my brother, he wears uh, glasses, and that helps to keep it uh, in check, let's say, with lazy eye. Mm. Okay, and uh, for you, Claire, I know you're into dancing. So, has there been any injuries, <laughs> dancing-related injuries? Personally, I've been quite lucky. Um, <clears throat> my specialism is tap dancing, and it's quite easy sometimes mm. to slip on the floor if maybe yes, someone spilt a bit of water, or there's somewhere someone who has polished the floor too much. The the floor can be yeah. quite slippery. Um, so yeah. you do have to be careful sometimes. So people. But does the floor get... have to be have to be like polished or like uh, because obviously the tap dancing is a lot don't... based on the, the noise. Yeah, you don't want a polished floor because there 
it's so easy to get injured that way. Yeah, um, true. You need a slightly rough surface that you can um, have friction with. Okay. Um, yeah. So it's easy to fall yeah. and, and hurt your knee or your ankle. Yeah. Um, particularly, um, the ankles are so um, important in tap dancing. We use them all the time. Mm -hmm. You have to be really good about warming up the ankles before you begin. Yes. They have to be loose. They have ah. to be warm because it's really oh, easy to give yourself an ankle injury. Um, I can imagine. Just so much relies on, on your ankle strength. And that yes. takes takes and years to build up. Um, oh, strength. yeah, to build up the strength. Yeah. And also in your ankles, you've got a lot of the ligaments, a lot of small bones. So it's quite a delicate part of your body as well. It is, it is. Yeah. Um, okay, Julia. I only use glasses forever. Yeah, my, my brother. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, probably one of the only ways to manage a lazy eye. Thank you for sharing, Julia. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, I think we can move on to the next slide. Okay, so staying with the same theme, what does it mean? Um, Claire, I was about to call you Julie then. <laughs> Claire, do you want to read the, the, the vocabulary? Sure. Okay, to be prone to, to get better, to get over, to suffer from, to run in the family, to come down with. Okay, so... Does anybody have any ideas on any of these uh, phrases here? These uh, phrasal verbs as well, what they could mean? What do you guys think? Mm. So to be prone to, to be prone to, what, what do you think, Claire? <laughs> well, if you hmm. are prone to something, it means you're quite susceptible to something. Yeah. Yeah. You are likely to have this problem in your life in general. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So, for example, I'm prone to migraines. It's something that uh, it runs a bit in my family. As so my mum suffers, uh, suffers. <laughs> is prone to, also mm -hmm. suffers, but is prone to migraines. So, yeah, and also me, unfortunately. Yeah. Are you prone to anything, Claire? Um, there was a period of time when I was prone to hay fever. Okay. Um, so hay fever is the seasonal illness or seasonal allergy. Um, that we mm. use this word in English to describe in the spring um, when mm. We have a um, itchy nose, uh, itchy eyes because of the tree pollen, because of the flowers. Um, yeah. I was prone to this for a few years. Um, oh. But I think <laughs> now it's, <laughs> it's stopped. I'm not prone to this anymore. Yeah. You've grown out of it, maybe. Uh, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> it was in my, in my late 20s, I think it happened. Yeah. 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 So the other and, thing about. Uh, the other thing about prone to is it's often there's an external influence on on your your problems yes. yeah i agree with my <clears throat> migraines so stress things like this can trigger it can trigger a migraine yeah, exactly yeah but yeah i had a roommate that uh, uh when i was living in milan who suffered a lot of the i was prone to uh to hay fever Mm. And, but he had hay fever almost all year round. It was uh, quite. Uh, he took medication for it because also he had uh, an allergy to dust. So he just he never had any respite. He was no. constantly sneezing. But in the spring was especially bad. Yeah, he had red eyes all the time, sneezing. Oh, that's just. And he would era. sneeze so much, he would uh, he would begin bleeding from his <gasps> nose. So yeah, it's quite. Uh, yeah, it wasn't the best. Sorry. Yeah. To, Plaster on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a, <laughs> I don't that's know if a kind, of, kind of allergy. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So to get better. So what? Yeah. What do you think it means, Claire? 
<laughs> to get better is a good thing. <laughs> it's when you recover yes. from your illness. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. To get better, to improve. Mm. Okay. To get over. Now, could be a yeah. bit similar. What do you think, Claire? It's a little similar, but we tend to use get over for mental health issues. This tends to be a mental yes. health or emotional issues. So, for example, yeah. if a relationship finishes, I can say, oh, I was really sad when the relationship finished. But after a few months, I got over it. So to recover exactly. from an yeah. emotional or a mental health issue. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> so it involves a lot of your emotions, your mental state, if you've been able to overcome, let's say, a situation. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, to suffer from, mm -hmm. what do you think, Claire? Well, it okay. can be similar to prone to, but we tend yeah. to use to suffer from a chronic illness. So if yes. someone has a chronic okay. illness, uh, they suffer from this illness. For example, my friend suffers yeah. from diabetes. It's uh, something okay. they will always have. It's a chronic illness. Yeah. So it's a lifelong suffering, you could say. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, to run in the family. So mm -hmm. I mentioned it before. So, Claire? Yeah. This is something that is uh, hereditary. So something that mm -hmm. my mother or my father has that they pass to me, that passes to the next generation in my family. Yeah. Or it could be exactly. that many members of the same family uh, share this mm -hmm. problem. Yes, it's true, it's true. So like I said before, my mum, my, yeah, she suffers, suffer, I keep saying suffers, <laughs> it's my mistake. <laughs> She's prone to migraines, so yeah, and I, I am too. Also my, my grandmother is prone to migraines, so obviously it's something that runs in our family. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. In my family, is we Is there have... anything that runs in my... In my family, we have bad eyesight. <laughs> Um, um, on both my mum and my dad's side, we have some one? eyesight problems. Mm -hmm. um, but also, back, um, for me, I am long sighted. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm also long sighted. Also, slightly long sighted. Yeah. yeah. So, long sighted is when I okay. can see at a long distance, but I can't see uh what's right in front of me without uh glasses exactly. or contact lenses so um i'm wearing contact lenses at the moment <laughs> so i can see ah, cool. on your um, glasses. Yeah, no glasses yeah. today <laughs> um, <laughs> and you do you wear Excellent. contact lenses um no i don't wear contact lenses um i used to wear reading glasses when i was younger mm. um because i'm long sighted so short mm. with my short sightedness i yeah i struggle to read or i get headaches if i read a lot uh close by because i can feel the strain on my eyes so i used to wear reading glasses but now i had a few checkups with the opticians and mm. he said my eyes have actually improved a bit so oh, wow. maybe I'll grow now I'm not sure that's good that's good that's all we said that way yeah okay so to come down with Claire okay what do you think so this is when you think you are about to get ill you have the initial symptoms of something and you think oh no I'm about to be ill <laughs> yes you're feeling a bit under the weather, you're mm -hmm. feeling a bit, you've got a bit of issue, your nose is running and you're thinking, oh, yeah, I'm coming down with something. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> okay. You, um, Sorry. Go. I'm going to put up under the weather. You use that nice phrase there, under the weather. Yes, under the weather. Yeah. Under the weather. Today I'm, I'm not feeling under the weather. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I think you're feeling a bit under the weather. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm at the end of my illness. I'm getting over it. So, yeah, I'm getting better. Uh, for sure. Okay, you're getting over it. You're not coming down with it. 
So this is oh, the end of it. This is okay, the end. So we should, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we should have some example. Yeah. Okay. So if anybody wants to jump in and help us out, then feel free. So number one, uh, Claire, do you want to read it? Mm -hmm. It took her several weeks to mm, the death of her dog. Mm. Mm. What do we think? It took her several weeks. What do you think? Is it an illness, a disease, uh, uh, an emotional suffering? Mm. What would you say, Claire? Well, um, this one is emotional. Um, yeah. So I'd say it took her several weeks to get over the death of her dog. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It took several weeks to get over the death of her dog. Good. Okay, number two. So yesterday he had a temperature, but today it has gone down. So he... Hmm? Hmm. What do we think? So yesterday he had a temperature, but today it's gone down. So he... What do you think, Claire? Um, so it's an illness. He is getting better. Yes. Because we're talking Good. about today, we're using the present continuous here. Exactly, yeah. So something that is happening is getting better. It's happening in the mo at the moment. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, number three, do you want to read it, Claire? Sure. I don't feel very well today. I think I mm, with something. Mm. What did we say before? Before, so not feeling very well. Feeling a bit under the weather. I think I am coming down with something. Yes. So obviously, again, it's happening now. He's not feeling well. It's happening. He's coming down with something. Mm -hmm. Okay, Claire, do you want to read it? Sure. She sometimes gets very bad headaches. She mm, migraines. Okay, sounds like me. Mm, it does. <laughs> so it's not talking about me because it's a she. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what do you think? <laughs> okay, it's going to be prone to or suffer from. I'd say she mm. is prone to migraines. Yes, but... And as well, it's third person because it is she. Mm -hmm. So she is prone to. Good. Okay. Uh, so, number five. <clears throat> when I was a child, I, mm, tonsillitis, I had it so frequently that in the end, it took my tonsils out. This is me. <laughs> uh, Unfortunately. <laughs> the last one was me. This one is Claire. <laughs> it is. So, it is. Can you explain what happened? Claire? Uh, yeah, exactly this. Uh, when I was a child, I suffered from tonsillitis frequently. Um, so in the end, the doctor said, oh, we take them out. Yeah. So I was uh, five years old when I went to have my tonsils taken out. Oh. It's a little girl. But did you improve the situation? Yeah. Yeah. Much better. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Okay. And... Finally, number six, Claire, do you want to read? Mm -hmm. Everybody in my family wears glasses. Bad eyesight. Mm. What could it be? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's one left. True, <laughs> true in my family. Bad eyesight runs in my family. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. In my family, not so much. No? Like, uh, we, we're pretty, you know, we're pretty all good with our eyes. Just my brother wears glasses. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. okay, okay, we've got a couple of minutes left. Let's uh, review the vocabulary that came up today very mm -hmm. quickly. So, uh, Dale, you talked about having a plaster cast and a sling. Mm -hmm. What was that? Why did you need that? I needed that because I broke my arm. So the plaster cast. This was uh, there to hold my arm in one place so it could uh, so it could get better. And I had a sling, so that would hold hold it in place as well. So I could not I didn't always have to hold it up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Great. And then what's the pronunciation of this one, Dale? 
Okay. Paracetamol. Yeah, great. Okay. Um, and this one, what's the pronunciation? A bandage. Yes, great. What is a bandage? A bandage is something you can wrap around uh, maybe a cat or a, a sprain, like uh, I think it was Roberta mm -hmm. had on her knee. So, yeah, something you can wrap around just to hold something in place. It's not a hard like a plaster cast, but it can uh, it's that to, to help something to to. to mm -hmm. Okay, finally, this one. What? How do you pronounce this one? Mm -hmm. Hay fever. Yeah. What is hay fever, Dale? It's an allergy that uh, usually people get in the spring when there is an allergy to the pollen in the air. So it causes a reaction. You get the runny, runny nose, the watery eyes, the sneezes, the coughs. It's not so nice. Yeah. Okay, guys, we're out of time. Thank you for watching and continue watching Thank the you. next team. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.